Hello there, this video will cover Firefox tips and tricks, which will include creating our own fake news, aka a fun way to learn web development, browser automation, and more. The Firefox browser currently runs on PCs, laptops, Androids, and Chromebooks. If you're interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without rooting. There will be links, further information, and updates in the pinned comment for this video. For clarity, as the desktops are identical, I will be using the Chromebook screen recordings. For Firefox issues, watch the Firefox fix video, which will be linked in the pinned comment. To create our own fake news, we will use a browser notepad and the developer tools. So first, we will create the browser notepad by entering in one line of HTML into the search bar, which is data colon text slash HTML comma left angle bracket HTML space content editable is equal to double quote true double quote right angle bracket left angle bracket title starting with a capital T right angle bracket notepad starting with a capital N left angle bracket slash title starting with a capital T right angle bracket. I will have this in the pinned comments for copying and pasting. When we are done entering this in, we can press enter and then when we click in the white space, we can type in text. Pretty cool, right? Now I recommend bookmarking this page so we don't have to enter in that line for the notepad again. If we'd like, we can save the notepad by doing Control S on the keyboard. This will save the notepad as an HTML file that we can open and edit in Firefox. We can also save a notepad as a PDF by doing Control P on the keyboard. Keep in mind that any empty lines will be taken out if we copy text from a PDF notepad over to a notepad we are editing. Now to toggle opening and closing the developer tools, we can do F12 or we can do Control Shift I on the keyboard. F12 is universally used to open the developer tools in other browsers. The developer tools are for examining and modifying what we see on a web page. This is great for learning how to create and design web pages. We can have the developer tools in a separate window by clicking on the three dots menu button in the top right of the developer tools and select separate window. We can also make everything inside the developer tools bigger by doing control shift plus on the keyboard. And then to make everything smaller, we can do control dash. There will be a link to the developer tools documentation in the pinned comment. Now we can use the notepad and the developer tools to create our own fake news. So first, we will open up File Manager PC Man FM, where we will select and copy the image we want to use for the fake news. Next, we can go back to the notepad we made earlier and paste the image into it, where it will be recreated as an embedded Base64 text image. If your image does not paste into the notepad, that's okay because I will show an alternate way on how to get the embedded Base64 text image later in the video. After we've pasted the image, we can right-click on it and select Inspect. From there, in the Developer Tools, we can double-click on the text starting with Data colon Image in order to highlight the text. Keep in mind that it may take anywhere from a moment up to a whole minute depending on the image and the device we are using. Once the text is highlighted, we can copy it and then go to whatever news website we would like. For my example, I will be using CNBC, which is also good for stock news. From here, we can right-click on one of the headline images and inspect it. And then in the first source element for the picture, we can double-click on the image link, paste our own image in place of it, and then press Enter. And for the finishing touch, we can change the headline text by right-clicking on the headline text inspect it, then click on the three dot button in the highlighted HTML, and then double click on the text used for the headline and type in a custom headline. When we are done typing in a headline, we can press enter, close out of the developer tools, and now we've made our own fake news. Note that any edits made with the developer tools are only visible on our own computer and they're not actually published. Now an alternative way that we can get to the embedded Base64 text image is by using a script. 
So from a terminal, we can first execute sudo space nano space slash usr slash bin slash go text pick to create a file named go text pick in the slash usr slash bin file path. Then in the first line, we will enter in all capital letters file is equal to dollar sign one. Dollar one refers to the file we give the script. So the file variable is equal to whatever image file we give the script. For the next line, we will enter in, in all capital letters, ext is equal to dollar sign left curly bracket, and then in all capital letters, file, hashtag asterisk dot right curly bracket. The ext variable contains only the file extension after the dot. So if we use a file called test.png, then the ext variable will take whatever is after the dot and would be equal to png. Then for the third line, we will enter in, in all capital letters, command is equal to single quote, and then in lowercase letters, data, colon, image, slash, single quote, dollar sign, and then in all capital letters, ext, single quote, semicolon, and in lowercase letters, base 64, comma, single quote, dollar sign, left parenthesis, base 64, space dash w zero space dollar sign and then in all capital letters file right parenthesis. This creates an embedded base64 text image which is based on the file and ext variables from the first two lines. That text image is stored in a variable called command. Now for the fourth line, we will enter in echo space dollar sign and in all capital letters command space right angle bracket, space in lowercase letters, pick.txt. This line puts the embedded base64 text image into a text file called pick.txt. Finally, in the last line, we will enter in mousepad, space pick.txt, space ampersand. The last line opens the pick.txt file with mousepad where it will be ready for us to copy the image. The ampersand at the end of the line runs mousepad in the background. When we are done with creating the script, we can do control O, enter, and then control X to save the file and exit nano. From there, all we have left to do to the script is sudo space chmod space plus x space slash usr slash bin slash go text pick. This will make the script executable. After that, we can navigate into the folder that has the image we want to use for the fake news. In my case, my image is in the pictures folder, so I will do cd space pictures. From here, we can use the script by doing go text pick space the name of the image. After that, we need to wait a moment or two for the text to be generated and opened with mousepad. When mousepad is open, we can do control A to select all of the text and then copy it. From there, we can go to the news website where we inspected the headline image and we can go to the first source element for the picture double click on the image link, paste the text, press enter, then close out of the developer tools, and we can see we put our own image into the headline. When using a browser such as Firefox, we can make use of extensions that automate tasks for us, such as filling out forms, sending emails, web scrapping, and so on. This is also known as a bot. An example of this is Automa, which is a low-code, no-code browser extension for browser automation that works in both the Firefox and Chrome browsers. I will have a list of additional automation tools in the pinned comment. To install Automa, we can click on the extension button with a puzzle piece in it. And then in the Find More Add-ons search box, we can search for Automa. And when Automa comes up, we can click on it. And then click on the Add to Firefox button. After that, we can click on the Add button to add Automa to Firefox. From here, we are going to ignore the first Automa window that comes up and go back to the Firefox window, so that way we can check the box to allow this extension to run in private windows, and then click on the OK button. Now to open Automa, we can click on the extension button with a puzzle piece in it and select Automa. 
From here, I am going to click on the play button next to Google search in order to execute an example where Automa will automatically do a Google search on the Automa extension. If nothing happens when we click on the play button, then we may need to change the history setting from Firefox settings. And under the privacy and security section, we can set Firefox to remember history and then click on the Restart Firefox Now button. This should now allow Automa to work properly. Keep in mind that we can always change the history settings back to how we normally configure them, and then we can also disable the Automa extension by clicking on the Extension button, select Manage Extensions, and then toggle off the Automa extension when it's not in use. We can also set up Automa on Chrome if Firefox is our go-to browser or vice versa in order to keep it separate. Now we can open the dashboard by opening up the Automa extension and clicking on the dashboard button that has a home icon in it. From here we can click on the new workflow button to create a new workflow. We can also click on the names of any of the example workflows to view or edit them. And finally, the second to last icon on the bottom left has links to Automa, such as their YouTube and GitHub. I will also have a link to the official Automa website in the pinned comment. Next, I am going to cover a couple of useful URLs that I recommend bookmarking for convenience. First, we have file colon slash slash slash, which lets us browse system files. In Firefox, we can open up various file types, such as PDFs, HTML, videos, audio, pictures, and text. The PDF reader can be used to read PDF books, like the C++ Annotations book. We can also open HTML-based books, such as the Advanced Bash Scripting book. Note that documentation and books can often be found in the slash usr slash share slash doc file path and can usually be opened by Firefox. We can also use Synaptic to see where a book or documentation has been downloaded. Also, Firefox is good for viewing and editing HTML-based notes with TiddlyWiki. For the next URL, we have about colon about, which gives us a whole list of special URLs that we can use in Firefox. Among that list, we can click on the about colon config URL, which is where we can set various browser preferences. The rest of the video will be covering some Firefox basics. Now I will cover a few useful keyboard shortcuts that we can use in Firefox. First we have F11, which toggles full screen. Next, we have Control D, which lets us quickly bookmark a page. Then we have Control P for printing a page. And lastly, we have Control S for saving a web page. For more information on web development, there's www.w3schools.com where they have lots of tutorials for different programming languages such as HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. For more information on Firefox, there's mozilla.org slash Firefox, which is the official Firefox page on the Mozilla website. Here they have cross-platform downloads for Linux, Windows, macOS, Android, and iOS. They also have release notes on what's new with Firefox, as well as support, which contains documentation. There's also add-ons.mozilla.org slash Firefox, where we can see all of the Firefox extensions. Finally, we can get more information from a terminal by doing firefox-esr space dash dash help, or we can do man space firefox-esr for additional documentation. In Firefox, we can export and import bookmarks as well as backup and restore bookmarks. Importing will add to our existing bookmarks, while restoring will replace all of our bookmarks. This is particularly useful when we want to back up our bookmarks and transfer them across devices. It's also important to note that if Firefox, for whatever reason, does not import or restore our bookmarks, that we don't delete the file with our bookmarks in it because we can still open the file and read the links with a text editor. To back up our bookmarks, we can click on the menu button near the top right, select bookmarks, then select Manage Bookmarks, and in the window that comes up, we can click on the Import and Backup dropdown, select Backup, navigate to where we would like to save the file as well as name the file, and then click on the Save button. 
Now to restore our bookmarks, we can simply just go back to the Import and Backup dropdown, and under Restore, we can select Choose File, then select the .json file that has our bookmarks in it, then click on the Open button, and finally click on the OK button to replace our existing bookmarks with the bookmarks in the .json file. Alternatively, we can export our bookmarks by clicking on the Import and Backup dropdown, select Export Bookmarks to HTML, then select wherever we would like to save the file and name the file, and then click on the Save button. Now to import those bookmarks, we need to once again go to the Import and Backup dropdown, select Import Bookmarks from HTML, then select the HTML file that has the bookmarks, click on the Open button, and now the bookmarks from the HTML file are added to our existing bookmarks, which as we can see in my case has duplicated my bookmarks. If we haven't already, we can set Firefox as the default browser by clicking on the Menu button near the top right, select Settings, and in the General section, we can click on the Make Default button. We can also set Firefox to use the System Print dialog for printing, which gives us more printing options, such as setting custom headers and footers. For reference, this is what the default dialog looks like. To do that, we need to go to the URL about colon config, click on the accept the risk and continue button, and then search for print.prefer. From there, click on the toggle button on the right side to set the value to true for print.prefer underscore system underscore dialog. Now Firefox will use the System Print dialog when we print a page. In the System Print dialog, under the General tab, we can select Print to File to print a page to PDF. This is also where we can name a file as well as select where to save it. Next, under the Page Setup tab, we can adjust the paper size, orientation, and scale. Lastly, under the Options tab, we can edit the headers and footers to our liking. Note that if we set a custom scale, then we will also need to uncheck the box that ignores scaling. Once we are done with all that, we can click on the print button to print the page to PDF. If Firefox jumps zoom levels while we are using it, then we can also search for mousewheel.with underscore control dot action, and then click on the edit button on the right side and set the value to zero. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, see you soon!